Good morning, Hank. It's Tuesday. So I live in Indiana, a state most known for not being known for much. Like, we have a race car thing, some professional sports teams, our children's museum is being attacked by dinosaurs, which is pretty cool, but that's about it. Hold on, quick road trip. Here's the kind of state we are. Indiana limestone was used to build a lot of very famous buildings in America, including the Empire State Building, but none of those famous buildings is actually in Indiana. There is one thing Indiana should be famous for, though, which is our state's largest cemetery, Crown Hill, here in Indianapolis. Wait, hold on. Like us on Facebook? Oh my god. At any rate, Indiana may not be able to claim many superlatives, but Crown Hill is the last and final resting place of more U.S. vice presidents than any other location on Earth. Here, for instance, is the grave of Thomas Hendricks, who was vice president for about eight months in 1885. And here is the mausoleum of Thomas R. Marshall, who was vice president from 1913 to 1921. Marshall was known for his self-deprecating sense of humor, once writing, Indiana is the mother of vice presidents, home to more second-class men than any other state. And here is the grave of Charles Fairbanks, who served as VP from 1905 to 1909 under Teddy Roosevelt. Fairbanks is most remembered today for actively working against the policies of the president he served under, but he is also remembered for his truly remarkable goatee, which might be the best facial hair in U.S. vice presidential history. One thing all Indiana vice presidents have in common, by the way, not one of them has gone on to become president. 18% of the U.S. vice presidents who never became president are from Indiana, a state that contains just 2% of the U.S. population. But honestly, when I walk around Crown Hill and think about what makes Indianapolis interesting, I do not think mostly of the vice presidents or dignitaries buried here. Crown Hill is a huge cemetery. It has over 25 miles of paved roads and contains over 200,000 graves. And when I am here, I think of all these people for whom Indianapolis was home. Their loves and losses and ambitions, the way that together they both made history and were subjected to it. I think about how all these people and so many more built the place where I now live, and I think about how all my neighbors and I are now making Indianapolis whatever it will be for the people who live here in the future. The people who will call Indianapolis home when I am, well, here at Crown Hill. The first person buried at Crown Hill was Lucy Ann Seton, who died of tuberculosis in 1864 at the age of 33. She and her family were new to the area, and in the local newspaper, her husband posted an announcement that read in part, The first burial at Crown Hill Cemetery will take place today. The husband of the deceased is a stranger to this city. We hope this invitation to the public to join in the funeral exercises will be accepted by a goodly number. And although almost no one in Indianapolis knew Lucy Ann Seton, hundreds and hundreds of people showed up for the funeral to help her husband and children mourn. And ever since, people of our city have regularly stopped at Seton's grave to pay their respects. And that, to me, is the best of Indianapolis. Hank, I'll see you on Friday.